Have you ever created an AI video where your character's face morphs into a stranger halfway through, or watched objects mysteriously transform and environments shift without explanation? Those consistency nightmares end today with Kling AI's groundbreaking Elements feature. What makes Elements revolutionary isn't just that it works, it's how it works. By allowing you to upload multiple reference images that serve as anchors, you can finally create AI videos where characters, objects, clothing, and environments maintain their identity from start to finish. In this video, I'll share the results of my extensive testing, complete with real examples, unexpected pitfalls, and practical workarounds. You'll discover exactly which reference images work best, how to craft effective prompts, and the optimal combinations for creating videos that were impossible until now. Let's dive into the future of AI video creation. So how do you access this amazing feature? It's super simple. Let me show you. Head over to Kling AI and click on AI videos. Make sure you've got image to video selected. You'll notice there are two options under image to video. The regular frames option. This is what we've been using, where you upload a single image and Kling animates it. And now the brand new elements option. This new feature lets you upload up to four different images. These can be characters, clothing, objects, environments, even animal faces. The system keeps them all consistent throughout your video. It's like having multiple anchor points that the AI respects while generating your video. I know, Pika released a somewhat similar feature a while back. After testing both, I can say with confidence, Kling's implementation is much smoother and more reliable. The consistency is better and the interface is far more intuitive. Trust me on this one. Exciting, right? No need to rush. I'm going to walk you through the basic workflow for using Elements. First, prepare your reference images up to four, then upload them to the Elements interface. Craft a prompt that connects these elements together and don't forget to add a negative prompt. This is critical. After adjusting settings like aspect ratio and video length, you can finally generate and evaluate. The better your reference images, the better your results will be. What makes a good reference image? Clean backgrounds, white is ideal, clear visibility of the subject, good lighting and strong characterization if you're using characters. And here's a tip that the official documentation doesn't emphasize enough. Your images should have somewhat similar artistic styles. Mixing a hyper-realistic photograph with a cartoon-style illustration might produce unpredictable results. Not saying it won't work, but consistency will likely suffer. Let me show you a real example so you can see just how powerful this is. For my first test, I wanted to make a dream come true. Bringing a favorite character right into your home, I chose Katniss Everdeen and decided to place her in a bedroom room setting. Crazy, right? Here's what I uploaded. A full body image of Katniss Everdeen in her black bodysuit, showing her iconic look from the arena. A bedroom setting with a window. Just a regular bedroom. Of course, the prompt is critical here. You need to describe how all these elements connect to each other. I wrote, cinematic. The woman in the black bodysuit stands by the window and turns to look at the viewer. The camera slowly zooms in on the woman's face. Why does this prompt work well, you ask? Cinematic. This sets the overall aesthetic tone, woman in the black bodysuit, directly references the character and her outfit stands by the window, places her in a specific location in the room, turns to look at the viewer, creates a simple but engaging action. Camera slowly zooms in on the woman's face, adds camera movement for dramatic effect. See the result for yourself. Katniss maintains her identity throughout. The bedroom setting stays consistent. She's standing right by that window and dramatically turning to look at you. A scenario that that lets you bring any character right into your own space. Is it perfect? No. As the camera zooms in, Katniss looks a bit older than she's supposed to be. There's a slight aging effect happening with her face. But honestly, who cares? She's in the room. She's right there in a consistent, believable way. You could do this with your own bedroom and have any character standing right in your personal space. Oh, and don't forget to add a negative prompt. I used morphing, anatomical errors, and glitch. In my testing, adding these negative prompts reduced facial morphing by about 40% and body glitches by nearly 60%. 
All right, that's enough for the instructions. Next, I'll be putting Kling AI elements to the test in different scenarios to see what it's capable of. Ready? Let's dive in. First of all, object consistency. For this test, I've got a great image of my reimagined King Arthur and a vintage Motomarini 501 Excalibur. The motorcycle is our key object here. We need it to stay consistent throughout the entire video. Now for the prompt, I wrote cinematic, the man with armor riding the motorbike on the highway speeding up hyper fast while camera follows them dynamically. This gives the AI all the elements it needs, who's doing what with which object in what setting, plus how the camera should move. The key here is making sure your object, in this case, the vintage motorbike, is clearly described and given an active role in the scene. Check out the results. The motorcycle, our key object, maintains its design throughout the entire video. The handlebars, engines, sleek lines all stay consistent from start to finish. That's the power of object consistency, something that was practically impossible before. Are there any issues? Absolutely. Arthur's proportions went a little wonky. His head's a bit too big for his body, giving him that medieval bobblehead look. That's probably because I only gave Kling a half-body photo of Arthur, so the AI had to imagine his lower half from scratch. But what matters here is that Excalibur, our main object, stays rock solid throughout the scene. To push this object consistency feature even further, I tested a completely different scenario, a pirate character with a rifle. The results? The rifle maintained about 60 to 70% consistency throughout the video. That might not sound mind-blowing at first, but compared to what was possible before, it's like comparing a flip phone to an iPhone 15. Why does this object consistency matter so much? Because now AI filmmakers can build entire narratives around objects. Think about Lord of the Rings. The One Ring is as much a character as Frodo. With Kling elements, these objects can finally maintain their identity throughout the video. What about character consistency? Well, things start to get interesting. Multiple character consistency has been a pain for AI video generators until now. Getting one character to stay consistent already drives them nuts, but two or more? You might as well be asking for the moon. I decided to try something that would blow people's minds. I uploaded an image of Princess Diana and another of Emma Corrin, who plays Diana in Netflix's The Crown. Real person meets actress in the ultimate royal crossover. My prompt was super straightforward. Two women in red dresses are drinking tea and talking with each other. When I hit generate, wait a second, who's that random woman on the right? One character looks like a mix of Emma and Diana, but the other was just some long-haired lady who'd never set foot in Buckingham Palace. Well, perhaps the Diana's image I selected is not clear enough. This shines a spotlight on something crucial. Your reference images need to be crystal clear. The AI can't read minds yet, so it needs to know exactly who's who. For round two, I created a much clearer, full-body image of Diana, where she's front and center, looking straight at the camera. No more artsy profile shots or distant paparazzi snaps. The difference? Night and day. Diana looked absolutely stunning. Her iconic hairstyle, shy smile, and royal posture perfectly maintained throughout the video. The AI captured her essence beautifully. Emma maintained her general appearance too, though I noticed her famous red polka dot dress with strings is turned into a plain red strapless number. Dress details are tough for AI. This taught me a killer hack. Create a full body reference image of your character in mid-journey first, then feed that into Kling. Since I had a detailed head-to-toe image of Diana, but only a partial shot of Emma, Diana's consistency was way better. Better reference equals better results. I can't stress this enough. I managed to create some decent scenes with Diana, Emma, and King Charles, but still, for anything substantial, two is definitely the sweet spot. One last nugget of wisdom from my testing. Characters with standout features, like Diana's signature hairdo maintain their identity way better than generic looking folks. The more unique visual hooks the AI has to grab onto, the more consistent your characters stay. Those details are why we can all spot someone from a mile away. Turns out AIs work the same way. Next up, consistent clothing and garments. Elements lets you upload images of specific clothing items and Kling will put them on your character. I tested this with a navy crew neck sweater and a pair of beige chinos along with a full body shot of James Bond and an environment. 
For the clothing items, I use clean product style images with white backgrounds. My prompt? Man with a blue sweater and beige trousers shopping in the convenience store. The result? Spot on consistency. Our James Bond is wearing exactly the sweater and beige pants I'd specified, walking in a convenience store. Think about the applications here. Fashion designers could visualize new combinations without a photo shoot. Content creators could dress characters in specific branded clothing. Filmmakers could ensure costume consistency without complex VFX. Let me prove it with another test, featuring four elements, a model, a futuristic dress, a pair of AR glasses, and a bag. Interestingly, Kling did try to include the bag in the first generation, even though I completely forgot to mention it in my prompt. Points for effort, I guess? But the bag looked, well, let's just say it doesn't look like the sleek bag from my reference photo. Kling was like, hey, I see you uploaded a bag, so I threw something bag-like in there, but I have no idea what you want me to do with it. Time for round two. I updated my prompt to woman with white dress holding a white bag and wearing augmented reality goggles walking on the street. And the results were, uh, what? The dress details improved a bit, but plot twist, the bag completely vanished. Poof gone, even worse than my first attempt where at least some random bag appeared. This taught me a crucial lesson. Kling Elements seems to have a fashion attention span similar to most people's exes. Just like humans, it gets overwhelmed when trying to focus on too many clothing items simultaneously. Through my fashion experiments and failures, I've discovered that clothing consistency works best when you stick to a max of two garments or accessories per scene. You use super clean reference images with white backgrounds. You explicitly name each item in your prompt. You keep the character's actions simple. No complex dance moves in designer outfits. The takeaway here is pretty clear. Less is more when it comes to consistent clothing elements. Now for creators looking to make AI ads, product consistency. I tested it with a fictional product, along with photo of the Hulk and a cat. My prompt is, the green man is holding a pack of snack and he's very happy. Cat looks at the pack of snack. This prompt actually contains two consecutive actions. The green man holding his snack and being happy, and the cat looking at the snack pack. Again, this sequential prompting approach works well. The motion matched my request. Hulk is doing his best to look happy? Well, happy might be a generous description. His expression landed somewhere between constipated and just saw an ex at the grocery store. Let's just say this particular take on the Hulk wouldn't be winning any Oscar nominations. The cat nailed its part though, staring at those snacks like they contained catnip infused tuna. But here's the mind blowing part. The snack pack maintained perfect consistency throughout the entire video. The packaging, logo, color, even the position of text elements stayed completely stable from start to finish. Not a single frame of brand inconsistency. If this were a real commercial, the Hulk's weird expressions and janky movements would definitely send it straight to the Marketing Fails compilation on YouTube. But from a pure brand consistency perspective, absolute home run. Sometimes you need to re-roll to get better results, especially with branding elements. I found that about 30% of my generation attempts had good brand consistency while the other 70% had some issues. It's definitely a numbers game at this point. Finally, environmental and animal consistency. You don't realize how crucial they are until you start working on an actual short film or narrative project. I briefly tested environment consistency with a ballerina dancing by a moonlit lake. The environment maintained its dreamy appearance throughout the video, and the ballerina remained clearly defined against it. In another environment test, I used an image of a giant gummy bear attacking a city with a separate cityscape reference. The environment consistency was remarkable. The urban setting maintained its appearance throughout with buildings keeping their general shapes and positions. The gummy bear character was exceptionally consistent, even maintaining its translucent, gelatinous texture. For animal consistency, I used a photo of my cat and an AI-generated cool dog putting them in a fighter jet scenario. Kling perfectly places them in the cockpit, a complex environmental challenge, and the consistency of both animals was remarkable. For such a low-quality reference image, my cat's fur color remained consistent, as did the dog's sun glasses. Here's something that surprised me. When combining human and animal faces in the same scene, I expected consistency issues, but Kling Elements handled it like a champ. 
In my tests with both a person and an animal in frame, both maintained their distinct features. Even when the human was the main focus of the action, the dog's distinctive face stayed consistent throughout. After dozens of tests and countless generations, the verdict is clear. Kling AI's Elements feature delivers the consistency breakthrough we've been waiting for. While not perfect, remember Arthur's bobblehead proportions, it represents a quantum leap from what was previously possible. Whether you're creating character-driven narratives, product demonstrations or surreal scenes with animals in fighter jets, Elements gives you unprecedented control over your AI-generated videos. Want to try these amazing AI yourself? All links and resources are awaiting you in the description. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye!